Rifting is the process of stretching and thinning of a continental plate, caused when a single plate starts to break apart into two plates. Rifting sometimes evolves into seafloor spreading. Rifts also provide sites where great thicknesses of sediment can be deposited. If rifting evolves to seafloor spreading, great sedimentary basins known as passive continental margins will form between the ruptured continent and the new ocean. Passive continental margins are great places for major seaports and cities and provide favorite destinations for summer vacations. This video explains all of these things and more. Rifting affects the continental lithosphere. Continental lithosphere consists of the continental crust and the uppermost mantle, which together forms the strong outer shell of the Earth, extending to about 100 to 200 kilometers deep. There is both oceanic and continental lithosphere, and these are the plates of plate tectonics. We say that the lithosphere is rigid because when a strong force pushes or pulls on it, the lithosphere will break. The lithosphere rides on hot, weak asthenosphere, and this makes plate tectonics possible. We say that the asthenosphere behaves plastically, because when a force is applied, the asthenosphere will flow or convect, similar to boiling water or the rising blobs in a lava lamp, but much more slowly. The process of starting to pull the lithosphere apart is called rifting. As rifting progresses, the lithosphere thins more and more, allowing the underlying asthenosphere to rise and melt to form magmas that rise to the surface and erupt as lava flows. Good examples of continental rifts are found in the East African Rift, the Rhinegraben of Germany, and the Rio Grande Rift of New Mexico in the United States. Over time, the lithosphere may thin completely, allowing the asthenosphere to reach the surface. When this happens, seafloor spreading begins, and the single plate becomes two smaller plates. This is what happened when the Red Sea formed, separating the African and Arabian plates. Volcanic eruptions are common during the early stages of rifting. As lithospheric extension progresses, the rifted region sinks or subsides. Sediments are also deposited in the subsiding region, so interbedded terrestrial sediments and lava flows are common in early rift deposits. The more the lithosphere is stretched, the more it subsides. Eventually, the surface of the rift lies below sea level allowing the sea to invade to form a young ocean like the Red Sea. Sometimes the young ocean may be repeatedly blocked from the sea, allowing the seawater to evaporate and leave behind evaporite deposits such as halite and gypsum. Once the lithosphere has thinned completely, seafloor spreading will begin, and the young ocean will widen enough to make it impossible to block seawater from the larger ocean, ending evaporite deposition. Normal marine sediments, such as limestone and shale, are then deposited as an open seaway is established. Thus, in the evolution of a continental rift widening into an ocean, the sequence of terrestrial sediments and lava, overlain by evaporites, overlain by marine sediments, is expected. Once the lithosphere thins completely, allowing the asthenosphere to reach the surface, seafloor spreading begins breaking the original one plate into two plates. The young ocean progressively widens with time once seafloor spreading begins. At the same time, the two halves of the original rift subside to become passive continental margins. Passive continental margins are not plate boundaries, but are the two separated halves of where the new plate boundary began to form as a continental rift. Passive continental margins mark boundaries between continental and oceanic crust. 
passive continental margins lie beneath continental shelves and coastal plains, like those of the eastern United States and around the Gulf of Mexico. Because rivers flow from continental interiors to the sea, passive continental margins accumulate unusually thick deposits of sediments. These exhibit a sequence of terrestrial sediments and lava, overlain by evaporites, overlain by marine sediments. As seafloor spreading continues, the two halves of the rift, now passive continental margins, are increasingly separated with time. An example of this is seen in the passive margins of the eastern United States and northwest Africa, which once were part of a single plate but were separated beginning in Jurassic time. Today, the two halves of the ancient plate are separated by the Atlantic Ocean, which started as a continental rift. Passive continental margins are natural places for seaports, many of which have grown into bustling seaports, like New York City. Houston, London, Bombay, Calcutta, Singapore, Hong Kong, Shanghai. The huge piles of sediment in passive continental margins are also important because they host many deposits of oil and natural gas. We hope this overview of continental rifting, young oceans, and passive continental margins and how these are related has been informative. The next time you enjoy a day at the beach, take a moment to think about the plate tectonic processes that created your vacation spot.